Hello, my amazing kiddos. So, as promised, here we are, the third book. We couldn't fit it in, the whole thing, because it's a little long before the end of the school year, but you'll see that this playlist is going to be constantly added to over the next few weeks as I keep making and uploading videos so that you can know what happens in the next step of Simmerine's adventure. So, without further ado, let's begin Calling on Dragons, Book 3 of the Enchanted Forest Chronicles. Chapter 1, in which a great many cats express opinions. Deep in the Enchanted Forest, in a neat gray house with a wide porch and a red roof, lived the witch Morwen and her nine cats. The cats were named Murgatroyd, Fiddlesticks, Miss Eliza Tudor, Scorn, Jasmine, Trouble, Jasper Darlington Higgins IV, Chaos, and Aunt Ophelia. And not one of them looked anything like a witch's cat. They were Tabby, Gray, White, Tortoiseshell, Ginger, Seal Brown, and every other color in the world except for a proper witchy black. Morwen didn't look like a witch any more than her cats looked as if they should belong to one. For one thing, she was much too young, less than thirty, and she had neither wrinkles nor warts. In fact, she ha if she hadn't been a witch, people might have said she was quite pretty. Her hair was the same ginger color as Jasmine's fur, and she had hazel eyes and a delicate pointed chin. Because she was very short, she had to stand quite straight instead of hunching over in correct witch fashion if she wanted people to pay attention to her. And she was nearsighted, so she always had to wear glasses. Hers had rectangular lenses. She refused even to put on the tall pointed hats most witches wore, and she dressed in loose black robes because they were comfortable and practical, not because they were traditional. All of this occasionally annoyed people who cared more about the propriety of her dress than the quality of her spells. You ought to turn him into a toad, Trouble said, looking up from washing his right front paw. Trouble was a large, lean gray tomcat with a crooked tail and a recently acquired ragged ear. He had never told Morwen exactly how he had damaged either the tail or the ear, but from the way he acted, she assumed he had won a fight with something. Who should I turn into a toad? Morwen asked, looking an unusually long way down. She was sitting sideways on her broomstick, floating comfortably next to the top of the front door, with a can of gold paint in one hand and a small paintbrush in the other. Above the door, in black letters, partly edged in gold, ran the message, None of this nonsense, please, which Morwen was engaged in repainting. The fellow who's making all the fuss about pointy hats and respect for tradition, Trouble replied, the one who's here grumbling about it a minute ago. What was his name? Arona Michaelier Gregonian Vemst, Morwen recited, putting the final gold long line along the bottom of the L in please. And it's a tempting thought, but someone worse would probably replace him. Turn them all into toads. I'll help. Toads, purred a new voice. A small ginger cat slithered out the open window and arched her back, then stretched out along the window ledge, where she could watch the entire yard without turning her head. I'm tired of toes. Why don't you turn somebody into a mouse for a change? The ginger cat ran her tongue around her lips. Good morning, Jasmine, Morwen said. I'm not planning on turning anyone into anything at the moment, but I'll keep it in mind. That means she won't do it, said Trouble. He looked at his right paw, decided it was clean enough for the time being, and began washing his left. Want a what? said Fiddlesticks, posting it, poking his brown head out the front door. Who's not doing it? Why shouldn't he? Or is that she? And who says so? Turns the one into a mouse. Morwen, I certainly don't see why not, and she does, Jasmine said in a bored tone pointedly turning her head away. Mice are nice, Fiddlesticks shutter, shouldered the door open another inch and trotted out onto the porch. So are fish. I haven't had any fish in a long time. 
He paused underneath Morwen's broom and looked up expectantly. You had fish for dinner yesterday, Morwen said without looking down. And you ate enough breakfast this morning to satisfy three ordinary cats, so don't try to pretend you're starving. It won't work. Someone's coming, Jasmine observed from the window. Trouble stood up and ambled to the edge of the porch. It's it's the chair witch of Deadly Nightshade Gardening Club. Wasn't she just here last week? It's our shans? Oh, bother, said Morwen, sticking her paintbrush into the can. Has she got that idiot cat Grendel with her? I told her not to bring him any more, but nine times out of ten she doesn't listen. Fiddlesticks joined Trouble at the top of her porch steps. I don't see him. I don't see anyone with her. I don't bother. I don't want to see her either. She doesn't like me. That's because you talk too much, Trouble told him. I'm going inside, Fiddlesticks announced. Then I won't have to see her. Maybe somebody's dropped some fish on the floor, he added hopefully as he trotted into the house. Marwin landed her broomstick and stood up just as the chair witch reached the porch steps. The chair witch looked exactly as a witch ought, tall with a crooked hat, stringy black hair, sharp black eyes, a long bony nose, and a wide, thin-lipped mouth. She hunched over as she walked, leaning on her broom as if it were a cane. Morwen put the paint can on the window ledge next to Jasmine. She set her broom against the wall and said, Good morning, Arshanis. Good morning, Morwen. Chair witch Arshanis croaked. What's this I hear about you growing lilacs in your garden? Well, since I don't know what you've heard, I can't answer you, Morwen replied. Come in and have some cider. Arshanis pounded the end of her broom against the porch floor, breaking some of the twigs and scattering bits of dust and bark in all directions. Don't be provoking, Morwen. You're a witch. You're supposed to grow poison oak and snake root and wolfsbane, not lilacs. You'll get thrown out of the deadly nightshade gardening club if you aren't careful. Nonsense. Where in the rules does it say I can't grow what I please in my own garden? It doesn't, Archanis admitted. And I'll tell you right away that you aren't the only one who puts a few lilacs and daylilies in with the rampion and headbane. Why, I've got a perfectly ordinary patch of daisies in the corner myself. Daisies, Jasmine snorted softly. She would. But I've been getting complaints, Arshanis continued, and I have to do something about them. What sort of complaints? That the deadly nightshade gardening club is too normal for witches. Archana said gloomily, that all we grow are everyday plants like cabbages and apples. Apples are a basic necessity for witches, Morwen said, and everyday plants don't turn people who eat them into donkeys. Who's complaining? Some fellow with an impossible name, Arona Mix something or other. Arona Miklier Grigunogian Vemst? The chair witch nodded. That's the one. I've gotten six regular letters and two by Eagle Express in the past month. He says he's going to write a letter to the Times next. He would, Trouble muttered. I said you should turn him into a toad. That idea sounds better all the time, Morwen told Trouble. Then she looked back at Arshanis, who, of course, had not understood a word Trouble had said. Fast isn't a witch, Morwen said. He's an idiot. Why worry about what he says? That's all very well, Morwen. But if he convinces people he is right, he'll ruin our image. And if people think we're not dangerous, they'll come around asking for love potions and penny curses, whatever they like. We'll be so busy mixing up cures for gout that we won't have time for things we want to do. Look what happened to the sorceresses. I haven't seen any of them around lately. Arshan has nodded. They got a reputation for being kind and beneficent. And the next thing you know, everyone was begging them for help. Most of them moved to remote islands or deep forests, just to get away from the pestering. It's all very well for you, Morwen, living out here in the enchanted forest anyway, but I... A loud yowl interrupted the chair witch in mid-sentence. An instant later, four cats tore around the corner of the house. The one in front was a heavy, short-legged tomcat with yellow eyes and fur as black as night. Behind him came a fat, long-haired tabby tomcat and two females, one a large calico and the other a fluffy white cat with blue eyes. 
the black cat streaked out into the front yard and made a hairpin turn and leapt for the porch where he clawed his way up archanez's skirts to perch on her shoulder the three pursuing cats jumped gracefully onto the porch railing and sat down curling their tails around their feet just as fiddlesticks poked his head out of the front door well what's all that noise about who's shouting is it a fight who's winning can i join with every question fiddlesticks pushed a little further until he was entirely outside of the house staring up at archanez and the cat on her shoulder who's that <coughs> said the black cat in a complaining tone <coughs> oh yeah said trouble well your father wears boots morwen gave the black cat a speculative look one of these days i'm going to have to work up a spell that will let me understand other people's cats as well as my own she said to archanez what was that about we got him nosing around in the back garden a long-haired tabby growled he had no business there a white cat added primly he's not one of us after all so we thought we would drive him away the stupid creature was babbling something about a rabbit the calico said with a disdainful look at the black cat and if that was as if that was any excuse why didn't you call me trouble demanded i never get to have any fun radiating hurt pride he stalked to the far end of the porch and disappeared into a large clump of bee balm you know people have been trying to get perfect universal cat translating spell for years Archana said to Morwen in a dry tone. She glanced at the cats on the porch railing. If you do come up with one, I'd like a copy for myself. Noisy old biddy, said the calico cat. On second thought, perhaps it would be better if I left things the way they are, Morwen said. Being disagreeable, are they? Archana said knowingly. It's only to be expected. Who ever heard of a polite cat? The black cat hissed. Grando, said Archana, behave yourself. It wasn't that bad, and besides, you could use the exercise. You certainly can, said the calico cat. What's all this racket? rumbled a low, sleepy cat voice from under the porch. Dash it, can't a fellow take a nap in peace? A moment later, a long cream and silver cat oozed around the steps to blink at the growing assembly above him. There's another thing, Morwen, and Chana said, uh, scowling at the newcomer. Cats and witches go together, I admit, and I know they're a big help with your spells, but you really ought to observe some reasonable limits. I do, said Morwen. All nine cats were useful, particularly when it came to working a long involved spell that required both concentration and power. Nine cats working together could channel a lot of magic. To explain all this would sound uncomfortably like bragging, however, so Morwen added, Anyway, I like cats. She's simply jealous because we're all smarter than he is, the white cat informed Morwen with a look at the black cat on Arshana's sh his shoulder. What, all of you, Morwen said, riding an eyebrow. All of us, the white cat said firmly, even fiddlesticks. I'm very smart, fiddlesticks agreed. I'm lots smarter than Fatso here, don't you think I'm smart, Morwen? Grendel hissed and bunched together as if he were preparing to launch himself from Archanez's shoulder. Hastily, Archanez put up her free hand and to hold him back. Perhaps I'd better leave now, she said. We can finish our discussion some other. There's a big garden show coming up in Lower Sandys, Morrowind said thoughtfully. Why doesn't the Deadly Nightshade Garden Club enter an exhibit? If we all work together, we should be able to put together something quite impressive. Archanez considered monks who and stay groups and so on in a large black tent and if everyone sends one or two really exotic things oh when you're a genius people will talk about it for years and that airy mcgale and grinny person won't have a leg to stand on i don't think it will be that simple morwen cautioned but an exhibit will buy us time to find out why he's so interested in making witches do things his way and stop him of course the fair witch said happily. Let's see. Kennegat grows midnight fire flowers, and I have a dozen giant weasel weeds. If I can talk woolly into letting us use her smoke blossoms, I'll contribute two diamond snake lilies and an invisible dusk blooming choke vine, 
Morwen said. I won't keep you any longer now. Just let me know when you've got things arranged. Chaos, Miss Eliza, Scorn, wait for me inside, if you please. The three cats sitting on the railing looked at each other. Then Chaos, the long-haired tabby, jumped down and sauntered past fiddlesticks into the house. The white cat, Miss Eliza Tudor, followed tail high, and fiddlesticks fell in behind her, apparently without even thinking about what he was doing. Scorn sat where she was, staring stubbornly at Morwen. I'm not leaving while that idiot of hers is still here, Scorn said with a sidelong glance at Grendel and Arshanes. There's no telling what he might get up to. As this did not seem unreasonable for a cat, Morwen let it pass. She walked her channels out of the yard, where there was plenty of room for her to take off, and bade her a polite goodbye. As soon as the chair witch was out of sight above the trees, Morwen turned back inside. Jasper Darling Huggingtons the fourth was sitting on the front porch steps, watching her. What was a good idea? he said. Invisible dust blooming choke vines aren't exactly easy to find, you know, much less to grow, and you haven't got any unless you've added them to the garden since early this morning. I'm well aware of that, Morwen said, but I've been wanting for some long time to put the fence, uh, to put along the fence by my back gate, to put some along the fence by my back gate. Now I've got an excuse to hunt them up. As long as you know what you're getting into, Jasper said. Can I go back to sleep now, or is there going to be more excitement? Go to sleep, said Morwen. As she climbed the porch steps, she gave scorn a pointed glare. Dignity dripping from every whisker, Scorn jumped down from the railing and walked into the house. Morwen shook her head, picked up her broomstick and paint can, and followed. And that's the end of the first chapter.